What's up, what's up, what's up, and welcome to another episode of The Savory Show. This is your boy and co-host, Avery Floyd. It's your boy and co-host, Sterling Littlejohn. Yes, sir. Welcome back again, y'all, to another episode. We are coming to you on Savory Show Saturday, so whenever you're listening to this episode, Sunday, Monday, whatever day of the week, it is Savory Show Saturday. Normally, we don't record on Saturdays, but this time around, we're doing it on Saturday, and as y'all know, we have a lot to get into. Uh, it's been great. Uh, Sterling and I took a few weeks off, handled some business. Uh, so we're back, man. It, hopefully you guys had a chance to tune in uh, to the ladies of Girl Chat Sports. Um, their podcast, sports podcast, is based out of Las Vegas, Nevada. You would have checked this out on their YouTube page. We did a nice guest feature for them and hopefully to bring them on our show in the next coming weeks and months. So definitely, if you've not checked that out, Go check out Girl Chat Sports as one word. Search it up on YouTube, Spotify, and some other platforms. You'll find them. And we had a lot of fun on there. We talked about Deshaun Watson, uh, gave our backstory of the Savory Show, how Sterling and I met, things like that. Um, got into some NBA talk as well. So today on our episode, y'all, we are going to get into some NBA talk. The trade deadline was a couple of days ago. Some NFL talk and even some more talk about Deshaun Watson. But to get it started off, we're going to get right into some NBA talk. Because, bro, trade deadline came and went. Um, we saw some pretty good pretty good moves and some pretty questionable moves as well. Um, with that being said, bro, I want to get your take on these moves. And where does this leave the outlook of these teams in the NBA? Yeah, yeah. so like Avery just said, there was a lot of big-time moves that were made uh, this past Thursday. Uh, so I'm actually going to start off with the NBA trade, line, trade deadline, excuse me, winners. So the first one I have is the Denver Nuggets. Uh, the Denver, Denver Nuggets acquired uh, Aaron Gordon from Orlando Magic. Uh, Aaron Gordon is averaging 14 points a game and six rebounds a game. Uh, to me, that's a big pickup for the Denver Nuggets, considering that they lost Jeremy Grant to the Detroit Pistons in the offseason. So he's going to be able to pick up that boy that's been left uh, for most of the season. Um, they actually traded, uh, actually, uh, uh, Gary Clark, sorry, not excuse me, not Gary Clark, uh, Gary Harris and RJ Hampton and protected first round pick um, to Orlando Magic. I think Aaron Gordon, the reason why Denver also picked him up is just in case in the playoff scenario that he has to match up with LeBron James or Kawhi Leonard. Um, he has length and he has athleticism. So I'm anxious to see how he's going to work with their team. Uh, also, they picked up JaVale McGee. Uh, from the Cleveland Cavaliers. In exchange, they traded uh, two second-round draft picks to Cleveland. Uh, JaVale is currently averaging eight points a game and five rebounds. Uh, JaVale McGee, um, you know, he's a very good rim protector. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people think of him with Shaq in the full and things like that, but he's really progressed into a very good player throughout the years. And I think he's really going to help Denver Nuggets out a lot. And he's familiar with them as well because he used to play for them um, back, I want to say, 2012 and 2013 NBA season. So he's familiar with the franchise, so that's a good pickup for them. Also, uh, Orlando Magic. Um, I just mentioned the moves that they just made, but I just think that they made, you know, the right decision as far as, you know, trying to go for a rebuild. And that's why I consider them an NBA trade, line, a trade deadline winners as well. Uh, they also traded Nikola, uh, Nikola uh, Vucevic, uh, the Chicago Bulls as well. And they're my next team um, who also uh, were winners as well. You know, Nicola is averaging 24 points a game and 11 assists. And I think that's really going to help out the Chicago Bulls as they progress um, into the future as well and having Zach Levine there. I know he just came out yesterday and said, you know, I plan to stay here for the future. Uh, you know, his future was up in the air until that trade uh, took place. So it's going to be very interesting to see that dynamic between them two. And I'm happy for the Chicago Bulls organization as a whole because they've been struggling uh, for the past few years trying to get back, you know, to postseason status. Uh, Portland Trail Blazers, I also feel like had a good draft as well. Uh, just because they picked up Norman Powell, who's averaging 19 points a game. Uh, to me, probably, the, you know, in my opinion, I think he should be running for six man of the year. I'll be honest, he probably should get it. Uh, he's having a fantastic year. He's up on a contract year as well. So let's see if Portland will actually try to resign him as well at the end of the season. The next one, um, I don't take pleasure in saying this because this is Avery's team, uh, but Miami Heat were 
trade deadline winners. Honestly, they probably made the trade of the day. Oh, and, you know, uh, hold okay. on, we're we, we gonna get into it. Okay. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say they made the trade today. I'll, I'll give it to them. You know, Victor Oladipo, even though, and, I, and I'm gonna explain it further. I, you know what? We'll talk about it soon, guys. We'll talk about it soon. We're not gonna get into it right now. How I truly feel about it. But what I'm gonna say is, it's a good trade for Miami. Um, you know, he's averaging 20 points a game and five rebounds. He's still trying to recover back from you know his horrific injury that took place two seasons ago. Um, they also possibly could get LaMarcus Aldridge in the buyout scenario as well. Uh, and they also picked up a very good shooter as well. Apologize if I pronounced his name wrong. Uh, Namaji uh, Belichick, I'm sorry if I pronounced his name wrong, but he's a very good shooter, and that was a good pickup for them as well. And also, I'm going to throw this team in here as well, the Clippers. I think, you know, picking up Rajon Rondo, um, trading Lou Williams to Atlanta, I think – Clippers needed a very good point guard. Yeah, obviously, Rajon Rondo is not what he used to be. I mean, the man is averaging, you know, three points a game, you know, with three, you know, three and a half assists per game. I get it. He's not what he used to be. But in a playoff scenario, he's really going to help the Clippers. They needed a point guard to help set up Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. But they all, most importantly, they needed a leader and ha to have a great presence in the locker room. And that's what Rajon Rondo is going to give them. He's not going to let Kawhi Leonard or Paul George do whatever they want to do. He's going to call them out and hold them accountable. And that's what they needed. And um, forgot to mention this team as well. The 76 was picking up George Hill, who's averaging 12 points a game and three assists. I think that's a pretty good pickup for them as well. Uh, just because they, you know, they get a very good point guard. I know he kind of struggles in the postseason a little bit, but I think he'll be able to help them in certain spots when needed. Uh, so with that said, bro, what do you think about those uh, trade deadline winners? Yeah, I'm definitely in, in agreement with you, bro. When you talk about the Denver Nuggets and just for a uh, like full circle perspective, you think about um, the LeBron injury, which we'll get into in a few minutes. But you think about LeBron's getting injured, right, with a high ankle sprain, potentially three to four weeks. Let's just say it's a month, right? And, you know, you got to take advantage of that, right? If you see the Lakers and AD is out still, so he's gonna they're gonna slip. The Nuggets, a team that I think currently, bro, they're right below the Lakers in the seating, right? You want to yeah, obviously jump okay. ahead of the Lakers and see can you get the four or the three seed, right? Or you know, three, four, or five, we'll see in the West. You want to position yourself well so that when LeBron does come back, and you know, if AD comes back fully healthy. You know, you guys get you trade these pe for these pieces. You get time to gel with them. So when it's playoff time, you know maybe LeBron's not a hundred percent ready, or maybe AD isn't fully back, and they got to get their legs under them. And if you get them in the first round by chance, you want to be ready to attack and pounce in that moment, right? So they made a huge deal. I feel like getting Aaron Gordon was big, right? Uh, they lost Jeremy Grant, as you mentioned, bro. So you have. Joe Kitts, you got Murray. Now you got Aaron Gordon, right? Um, and we all know him from the dunk contest, but he's got a little bit better to a shooting a three ball. So, like, he could be a little versatile. You have him maybe guarding LeBron, you know, maybe even, I mean, you can't really guard AD, but even to assist, as we know that, you know, Joe Kitts really couldn't do much defending AD uh, in the Lakers when they played last year in the conference finals in the bubble. I love that trade for them. Um, of course, my Miami Heat. Uh, I'm surprised you said trade of the day. I'm I, I'm very surprised yeah. you said trade of the day. However, uh, as we discuss off air, I do love that trade for them because here's the thing. I don't believe you're trading for Victor Oladipo to be that guy. You have Bam, you have Jimmy. Even if he could fall into line as like the third option or fourth option. The thing with the Heat, bro, and, and we saw this last year, they have a bunch of good solid players, right? Jimmy Butler is like the borderline, okay, every year, could he be an all-star? You know, he's right. You know, he didn't make the all-star team this year. Bam didn't make it this year. Last year, they both made it. Bam is up and coming. He's really the future of the franchise. But you still got Duncan Robinson. You still got Tyler Harrell, very young, right? He hasn't reached his full potential yet. So I'm glad they did not deal Her uh, Tyler Harrell for like, let's say, a Kyle Lowry, right, who was available, who didn't move at all. Um, or trading for, you know, Spencer Dinwiddie. Thank God they did not pull that trade off. You dig what I'm saying? I'm glad my Miami Heat did that because, listen, they've been slipping of late, okay? They're the 8th seed currently. Their record's 22 and 24. Um, by the time you guys are listening to this, I mean, it could be even worse. But they're, they're ba barely hanging on to that 8th seed. 
And we're, I'm gonna need them to take that up. Okay. You got Boston, you got Atlanta, you got the Knicks, even Charlotte. Charlotte's currently the four yes, seed. But they're right? not gonna keep it. They're not. So the Heat, the veteran presence that they are, we still got a month and some change. You get Oladipo to, I'm, I'm assuming he will start. And even if you don't start him in the beginning, just get his feet wet, you know, feel the Miami Heat culture, okay? We're some rough riders. We're some dogs. Hopefully he could fall in line. If not, you could come off the bench for 10, 15 a game, and you, that's it. But we'll see what happens. That, yeah. I'm, oh, my God. Line. And here's the thing, too, though, y'all. All right. Because we know Oladipo, right. wait, wait a minute. Oladipo, you know, he'll be a free agent after this year, if I'm not mistaken. So <laughs> yeah. this is a trial run. It's a trial run. We gave up Avery Bradley and Kelly Olenek. And we swap picks, bro. Like to me, that's a win for Miami. We didn't give up Duncan Robinson. We didn't give up Tyler Harrow. We still have Iguodala on the bench for defensive purposes. So I, we might even get Lamarcus Aldridge, who I'm not high on. I'm not at all. He's old. And he's retired. But coming off the bench, you know, giving Bam some time to rest for you know 15 minutes or however long a game, get some rebounds. You're not asking him to be the guy. Okay, I like a move like that if we can pull that off. But bro, I, I gotta look yeah. real quick. The other yeah. trade I did want to speak on real quick is that um, the Norman Powell deal that you said, I think that's huge for the Trailblazers. And there again, they're right in the thick of it too from anywhere from three, four, five, six. See, you never know where they can end up. So I think for them, that was huge. Another score. Obviously, you got Dame Dollar, one of my favorite players in the league. You got Melo. You got, you know, you got some guys on there. But um, with that, bro, I mean, I think the biggest yeah. thing, another thing actually too, this is your old team when Kyrie was the Celtics getting Evan Fournier. I don't know if that's a huge deal, but it yeah, does help their there. guard play. Yeah. That's one trade that's yeah. low-key, could help them out. I know they just beat the um the Bucks last night as well. So again, the Celtics start off slow. They're currently the seventh seed. We think of the Celtics as probably a top four or five seed before the season, right? They got Tatum a becoming all-star. They got Jalen Brown. Marcus Smart is back off his injury. They should be starting to take it up as well. So that's my take on it, bro. I just want to see in the West, can the Clippers, can the Nuggets take advantage of LeBron being injured, get some higher ground as far as seeding is concerned. So the Lakers might have to end up, bro. You mentioned this on the other show the other day. They might get into that seven seed. That means you have to do the playing tournament. So it's just extra games you're going to play that you would not want to if you had the luxury of having a top six seed in the league this year. But that's my take on it, bro. So... All right. Yeah. You, you, I'm about to go in on you for one. Okay. <laughs> because here's the thing. I, okay. I never disagree with you that Miami made a good move because they didn't give up anybody. That's not what I'm talking about. I agree with you on that. My whole thing is this. You should up here saying Victor come off the bench for 10 to 15. Y'all brought him there for that? If y'all brought him to do that, that's a problem. That is a problem. No. No, no, you can't. You can't do that. You can't. I'm sorry, I'm bro. Saying you if he does not fall in line, I'm not saying that's going to happen. If he's not with it, bro. Now, hold on a minute, too. We know the Rockets, the team he was with, got traded to. I mean, bro, they lost 20 games. They were on a 20 game losing streak. It was miserable to be playing for them. Now you're playing with a team, just was in the uh, NBA he, Finals he was last year. Indiana. He, he was miserable there. But Indiana expected him to be the guy, bro. They expect him to be the guy. But, 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 but here's the thing, though. Y'all bringing him in to do what? Exactly. You talking about just what, what are you expecting him to do? Because he's, he's not going to move the needle for a championship, bro. So, like, what's the point? Y'all acting like he's going to do something for y'all. I'm, but but if you keep in perspective, right? Again, you traded Avery Bradley and Kelly Olynyk. So if you're if you're the I, Heat, I get it. I get, if you I feel that, that. You could, but he, but bro, see, here's the thing, though, and Pat Riley probably thinks this, right? You got to the finals last year. Think of how your team was constructed. You're not going to be able to pull in a big name. You don't want to get Kyle Lowry because one, he might not stay there, and two, he's older. Three, the money, and four, the assets you got to trade to get him. So it's like if you make a deal, get. Yeah, but that's the thing, bro. That that's okay because it's a win win. Because, bro, so okay, so we're going to keep Avery Bradley and Kelly Olynyk after this year. That's not what I'm saying. But my thing is this: if Victor don't work out, y'all go back to where y'all just were at. Back to where you just guys were at. That's the risk that, you take, but that's what no. that's yeah. Okay, and, they gotta and live. It, they gotta live with it. They gotta live okay. with it. Th th and that and that's fine. But my thing is this: 
I'm not sold on Victor Oladipo helping you guys get to the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm not. I'm sorry. Like it's it's. Yeah. A, I see what you're saying, but no, no. Listen, for the brother was averaging 20 a game, miserable. We're not saying he's got to even put up 20, bro. I'm just saying, no. It's another option as a score. You got to if you want to be Brooklyn. Bro, you got to if you want to be Brooklyn. I'm. Uh, you know, I ain't gonna go that far with it. I'm just I, saying I, to I, compete. I, I mean, I mean, we'll see. Listen, if you're the Heat, like I said, bro, they know they don't got Kyrie, they don't got Harden, they don't got a KD. But if you think of when it comes to playoff time, I'm looking at the Heat as a top four team in the East. That's how I'm gonna look at it as a top four team. Y'all, That's y'all just me. Made a, y'all made a move to be just competing. That's all it is. That's, that's it. all. That's all it at is. The the, at the end of the that's day, all though, it bro, is. Bro, they, they, exactly. That's all it is. Hey, we beat. So what, guess, why are we getting excited there? What, why are we talking about it there? You said it was a trade of the day. I didn't say that, bro. Oh, 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 it. It, oh, it was because of what you just made, the, the point that you made. You guys traded him for nothing. So I got to give it to you. I don't disagree with you on I that. Don't, bro, bro, like, like I said, it's a, tri- it's a trial run. If it doesn't work out, see ya. Get out of Miami, bro. But it's, that's, that's we'll fine. see. That's fine, bro. We'll that's see. Fine. That's we'll fine, see. man. Yeah, man. So let, let's go. We'll see, uh, bro. But look, we're going to transition just a little bit, y'all. Staying on the NBA, but we're talking about more so the outlook of the rest of the uh, the season. As we mentioned a little bit, you know, LeBron has his ankle injury. AD still been out with his, you know, calf injury, a.k.a. Achilles injury, okay? Katie's been out for a minute, too, which they're saying that I think is Achilles, bro. I don't know. KD, so, no, 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 no. It's not his Achilles. Hey. Hamstring, bro. Hamstring. Ham- oh, sorry. Yeah, he, I think they said he he tore it or he partially tore. Partially yeah, tore. yeah. Hey, I, hey, I, I, that yeah. just hurts thinking about that. But um, so the hammy got the hamstring. Embiid obviously has been out too, but Philly's been 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 rolling still. Um, so bro, with these injuries, man, we talked about the trades, but when you look at the rest of the uh, the um uh, the league and the West Coast, uh, West sorry, Western Conference, Eastern Conference, what's your outlook as we get closer and closer to the playoffs? thinking about the trade deadline, thinking about these injuries in the West. What's your outlook on it, bro? Like, what do you think will happen with these teams as far as the seeding is concerned? Yeah, so it's it's going to be interesting because I, I think when it comes to the – I'm going to start with the Eastern Conference first. So I think it's going to be interesting to see with the top three teams with the 76ers, Nets, and Bucks. Uh I'll be honest with you, for the Nets' perspective, the Nets need to get the first overall seed, and here's why. Because even though I think they'll beat Milwaukee, you don't want to have to go through Milwaukee, then go to Philadelphia and play them, you know, in the conference finals, heading over to Philadelphia. Obviously, I know fans are not in the stands, but regardless, that's going to be kind of tough. I still think they will beat Philadelphia, but I think for me, I want to have the Nets get the first overall pick because right now, if you look through the fourth and through eighth spots, like you just kind of mentioned, they all around the same, you know, as far as record-wise. I mean, the Hornets are 23-21, but as we said, they're going to drop. The Knicks are 23-22 record. Then the Hawks are right after them. Then the Celtics and Miami. Uh, in my opinion, uh, I, I just think that the Nets need to get that first overall seed. So whoever they play in that second round matchup, whether it's Miami, whoever, the Knicks, whoever, I'm just throwing out teams right now, the Celtics, they would match up better and have an easier role to get to the conference finals and be ready for either the Sixers or the Bucks, in my opinion. Uh, when it comes to the West, it's going to be interesting, as you mentioned before, with the Lakers. They could drop down to the seventh seed, and like we just talked about before, possibly being a play-in tournament. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen in the West. To me, the West is going to be very intriguing this year. Because I'll be honest with you, bro, I, I, they, they came out with reports today and said things are not looking good for Anthony Davis right now. Like, it's going to be a long roll before he gets back. And if I'm the Lakers, they might have to chalk it up this year, in my opinion. If, if he truly has an Achilles injury, sit him down for the rest of the year. Do not play this man. Because if you bring him out there and he tears his Achilles – it, it, it hurts your – it's going to hurt you for the next few years. And then what you're going to do, you don't have any assets to get anybody. So what you're going to do, then LeBron's going to be going into his 19th season at the age of 37 without an Anthony Davis. You don't want that. And I just think that 
if I'm the Lakers, I'm not sure if I'm going to play Anthony Davis this year. I know they keep talking about, he's, you know, he's trying to rehab. No, sitting down. Uh, Utah Jazz, I think they'll keep the number one seed, but I'll be honest, bro, I don't think they'll come out of the second round. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> I don't know who they'll match up with, but I'm not so they get into the conference finals. Yeah. Uh, That's a good point. I think by the Clippers getting Rondo, I think the Clippers will make it to the conference finals. In regards to who they'll play, I don't know. I'm I'm hoping it's the Lakers, but I'm just not sure. Like, it, it's very tough to say the Lakers where they're going to stand right now because we don't know with LeBron and AD's injury. Like, we don't really know. So it's like the ideal matchup for me would be to see the Lakers versus the Clippers in the conference finals. But yes, if I if I had to pick, if the Lakers didn't get there. I would probably say Clippers versus the Nuggets, maybe depending on how the season, the, the seeding works out, maybe, like possibly. I don't think the Suns would be ready yet, even though Chris Paul is a fantastic leader and should be up for MVP conversations, by the way. Uh, nobody's talking about that, but what he has done with that franchise is very uh, incredible. And they have a very good head coach in Monty Williams, in my opinion, should be coach of the year, in my opinion. That's just me. Absolutely. You know, I don't know if other people feel about that, but that's just my opinion. I'm proud of the man. And DeAndre Ayton is balling this year. Devin Booker should have been named to the all-star team anyway. I know he made it as a, you know, replacement, but he should have been named. Uh, Absolutely. He's still still balling out. Uh, Portland, I mean, I know – here's the thing with Portland, bro. I got mad love for Dame Dollar, but it seems like we go through this every year with Portland. Mm. Are they going to – get better? Are they going to do this and do that? And I love the Norman Powell edition. I know we just talked about it. Yeah. But are they going to get to the conference finals? Uh, I don't know. No Pop, one feels maybe. confident about that, yeah. And then after that, then you got like Dallas and the Spurs and Golden State kind of all in the mix. But I don't care about the rest of those teams. But the West is interesting because it's honestly up for grabs really in the West right now. But to me, the top dogs are in the East with Brooklyn. And I think, you know, you already know how I feel about it. I got Brooklyn coming out of the Eastern Conference for sure and winning the championship. So it don't matter who they play in the West. They beating any team out there. I don't care who it is. So what you think? Yeah, no, nah, I, I, I think it's the East is more like cut and dry. I, I'm just interested because I'm a Heat fan, so I want to see where they end up. But I think, yeah, it's going to be between Philly and Brooklyn, bro. I think there's a pretty big drop-off after Philly and Brooklyn. I'm Milwaukee, I don't think, really is still – they just don't do it for me, bro. And and I even predicted, I think, earlier this year that, yeah, they're going to make yeah. it to the finals, but I don't feel confident about that. They could get got by the Celtics. They can get got by the Heat. I just don't trust them. Like, you know what I mean? So I think the Milwaukee's another team, bro. They're gonna, they might get bounced in the second round too, right, whether they get the three seed or the four. Well, They'll probably hang on to the three. The, the big gap, really, is the big three in the East. After that is a big gap. Everybody's, like, neck and neck from four to eight. Um, I think, like you said, Brooklyn and Philly, I think that would be a great conference finals on paper. It's the best matchup we can get. If MB can somehow get back to being healthy and no issues with him, I'll look forward to seeing that. And I do believe the Nets will come out the East. But I at least think Philly could push into at least six, maybe seven. Yeah, yeah. Maybe seven. But – we don't – yeah, anyone else in the East, man, look, I'm always going to root for my Heat, and they could be a sleeper to make the conference finals. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, Doc Rivers has done a, a really good job with the Sixers. But, again, once the playoff time, we know how it's been for Doc Rivers now. So, yes, regular season-wise, they're doing great. But once the playoffs hit and that pressure, you know, mounts, the Heat have that – that. Cha- I know you're going to laugh when I say this, but they have that championship pedigree. Oh. If you talk about teams in the East – but everyone that's lined up. I'm no, just I'm not, being real. No, like when you look in no, the I'm East. Not. Oh, I would take Eric Spolstra over Doc Rivers. Yeah. So oh, yeah. River, I, I, that's I'm been his Achilles that. heel is, is making it to the damn conference finals. Oh, you know yeah, he's right been to the finals as a coach. So that's why I, I know he's done great. But playoff time, I want to see when that pressure mounts. Can you really get it done? Now, moving over to the West, bro, like we said. Uh, Phoenix Suns definitely surprised a lot of people. I mean, DeAndre Ayton was a top pick, right? We expected him to be solid. Uh, Devin Booker has been, you know, everything we expected, if not more. Um, CP3 coming over there, really getting the boys in line, man. I'm, I'm happy to see them, you know, at the top of the standings for once in a, in a, in a long time. since like yeah. the Steve Nash and Mark Stoudemire days. Uh, so you got that. 
Utah, I'm, I've never been sold on Utah. Even if they're the one seed, I'm still not sold on Utah. I'd have more faith, honestly, in Denver. Um, the Clippers, I think, I said this before on the, on the show we were guests on, bro. I think I said they need to get the point guard. They didn't get Lowry. They didn't get Lonzo. But I think Rondo fits what they need. They need a veteran point guard who's going to keep uh, you know, Kawhi. I mean, it's not even keeping them in line. It's more so just like he going to stay on them, like you said, right? Stay on them. And with that, bro, I think the Clippers can emerge out of the West as long as they don't choke. I mean, Ty Lu, you know, he's a different coach for Doc Rivers, but he was on the staff last year too. So, like, is it really a big difference? Mm, not really. It's really going to come down to the players, bro, the stars. Is PG-13 going to show up? Is Kawhi going to be Kawhi that we know him to be and not choke like they did last year in in the uh, series against Denver. So that's my outlook on it, bro. I'm excited. Um, the West, I mean, I don't, you know, the Spurs might get, you know, maybe they get swapped out with the Grizzlies or Golden State because uh, Steph Curry has been injured for a little bit too now. So if yeah. he doesn't come back fully healthy, I think, that, you know, Golden State's done. If they make it, they'll be an eight seed unless they catch fire and go on a, on a nice streak. But – that, Lakers that are in play, trouble. Man. That's the biggest thing, bro. The Lakers are in trouble. They will well, far at least to six. I, now, we'll see when Braun comes back. He might propel him to the six seed, but they don't want to get in that seven. You just don't want to have the extra playing game or two. You don't want that. Um, but, you know, if they but if they have to, like, like like I mentioned before, like if Anthony Davis is not 100% healthy or, or heck, 85, do not play this, man. Like, let – Keep him out for the whole year, man, because I'm telling you, if he gets, if he re-aggravates that Achilles, it is over for the Lakers for the foreseeable f- mm-hmm. future. We won't talk they about him no re- more. And they just re-upped him right after they won the chip. They re-upped his deal. That, that's what so I'm he's saying. a future. You got to be careful with him more than anybody else. Um, um, but I'll tell you this. A LeBron-led Lakers squad minus AD, you know, just giving LeBron his props, he could probably, probably get them to that conference final still. I would not be surprised. But – they would fall, but he, he might be able to, to willpower them to the conference. I give him second. I give him second round. I don't think he'll get him to the conference finals. I'll give it depends. It all depends on the matchup, bro. Like if the Lakers play Portland, if they play the Nuggets, even the Suns, because the Suns are inexperienced. I could see him getting the Suns too. But if you got to play the Clips, the Clippers, the way Utah's been balling, even Denver, I don't know about that. Those yeah. are those three teams. I don't think they can really take down without AD. But, but it depends on, like you said, where they match up at. Like, say, for example, they match up in the sixth spot. They have to play against the Clippers in the first round with no Anthony Davis. They're not beating the Clippers. Like, oh, they're not. No. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's going to, like. However, it, the Clippers, just because of how they are, bro, I can see it going seven. Just because, bro, like. Probably. probably. Just the mystique of facing the Lakers and, like, oh, my God, like, it's the Lakers, like. I don't, I don't know if they're ready. I, I, if you can't beat them now, bro, it's over. Like I said, the Clippers, I'm looking for y'all coming out the West. If y'all cannot get to the West with AD being down, y'all don't deserve to make it anyway. But I that's my that. take, bro. Um, and just real quick, I know we're about to transition to the next uh, topic. Just wanted to know, like, for, from your perspective, who is your MVP right now? Since we're talking about the outlook of the season, you know, like, like sure. we mentioned, like we mentioned, like, uh, you know, LeBron and MB, you know, are injured now. And mm. I, at, at the time, like a couple of weeks ago, I had MB one and LeBron two. And then once with MB, yeah. LeBron was number one. Um, anxious to know from you, who do you think is the MVP right now? Yeah, and uh, I was watching Sports Center earlier today in the morning, and they had like the Caesar sports book favorites. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Jokic was first, LeBron was second, like <laughs> Embiid, and so on and so forth. Harden was like fourth or fifth. And I'm like, dang, y'all really think? See, see, my thing is, I believe if everything plays out the way it's currently constructed, as in LeBron missing that month that he's supposed to miss. Uh, well, I, who, oh, Embiid missing his time. I think Harden will propel himself in the top two conversation. For some reason, I just feel like the media wants Jokic to win the MVP. Maybe it's just me. I think the media like wants him to win it. But um, it, it's like when I think about it, if, if Brooklyn could maintain a top two seed, which they will, Harden's been balling, um, I believe that he should get the MVP. Um, he has to just keep balling. That's it. 
Jokic, I mean, Denver's like fifth or fourth. So I don't think unless Denver broke and get a top two seed in the West, I'm not giving him the MVP. I would give it to Harden, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I don't know how long Embiid will be out, but I think it's he's it's a wrap for him getting the MVP, just like LeBron. So I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Harden, bro. But he's got to keep balling. Um, the more games he keeps playing, because everyone's like, oh, he hasn't played, you know, that many games with the Nets, and you know, it's compared to some of the other players like Jokic is playing more games this year. And so as the season progresses, I think it will be more consistent that everyone will fall in line and say that James Harden will be the MVP. Plus, with yeah. Kyrie keep taking his little hiatuses every now and then, it only helps to build his case up, to be honest with you. Because when Kyrie plays, bro, he's been balling too. So it's like almost Kyrie's almost taken away from Harden balling out because – Low key, I know you said you thought Kyrie for a second should have been in the conversation. Well, 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 all right. Well, okay. All right. So, so, so let, let, let me go to Kyrie first. When I, when I said he should be in the conversation, I meant top five. Uh, and I stand by that. And when it, come, when it comes to Kyrie, see, see, everybody's about the hiatus. News came out literally two days ago that his fiance just found out she was pregnant. So maybe that's why he not playing right now. Like, I don't know, like, What's going on with that? I but don't hold it against them personally. I'm not the media like like those. No, I, I don't I hold know. it against them. But, but for people who don't know, that's why. Like, that's my whole thing. Like, everybody's just thinking that he just took it off just because. Like, no, like his fiance just found out she's pregnant. So just wanted to put that out there for our viewers. Like, because people want to just kill kill the brother. And don't get me wrong. I'm a, yeah. you know, Kyrie, my favorite player. He's done, he's done some things that are questionable. But at the same time, the media does go overboard with him as well. Uh, but back to your I MVP, uh, but back to the MVP, I agree. It should be James Harden, in my opinion. I mean, the man's averaging 25 a game, eight rebounds, and 11 assists. And last night, the man had 44 points, 14 rebounds, and eight assists against the Detroit Pistons. That was his 46th career double-double. The only guard with more is Oscar Robinson, bro. Like, I, yeah, I get it. I, like, no, matter of fact, no, I don't get it. But everybody's trying to bring up what happened in Houston. Okay, I know he didn't handle himself professionally. I get that. But at the same time, what he has done since he came over to Brooklyn, when everybody thought that he wouldn't be able to work with these guys, they thought that he would carry over his game from Houston to Brooklyn. It hasn't been that way. That man has been selfless. And the dynamic that he has, more so particularly with Kyrie, because they play more games together, has just been beautiful to watch. Because everybody was worried about them two specifically. And they have worked wonders with each other. And James Harden is balling. We got to give him his respect. The only thing James Harden has to do for me is show up in the postseason. I've seen him ball out in the season. Not to this extent. Even though he's averaged more points, this is the best I've seen him play in his career. But I have to see him ball out in the postseason. Um, and just real quick, this is not an MVP thing. Blake Griffin last night had 17 points, by the way. I just wanted to shout him out just because – He's going to have a very crucial role on the team. They're not expecting him to do much. But if he can have 12 to 15 points a game for them, that's all they need from Blake Griffin. And that's going to help Brooklyn out tremendously. Yeah, he started dunking again, too. I seen he, he getting sure up did. There. He told Detroit, he said, Detroit, what's up? He told him, what's yeah, up? I, I still got it. I still got it. He was oh, talking cash to them last night, boy. Yeah. I love it. Hey, he's with Brooklyn, so he's going gonna to talk smack now. If he got oh, traded. Yeah. If you went to like the Hornets or some other place, he won't be saying nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would be talking. Yeah, but that's good, bro. So we're looking uh harder for MVP. We think the Lakers are gonna fall, which obviously is expected. Brooklyn yeah. out the east, maybe the Clippers out the west. We'll see. We still got an, about a month or so left in the season, y'all. So stay tuned. We're gonna have some more updates as we go along in the season. <laughs> All right, y'all, welcome back. And we're going to get into the NFL, man. And, you know, I still have a you know sore spot right now because uh, cause the Buccaneers have won and, uh, you know, Brady had got his seventh ring. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about free agency, man, because, you know, we had a lot of people get signed, a lot of willing and dealing, man. Um, so just some updates because we haven't spoken on the NFL in a little while, right? Um, you know, Sterling's boy, Dak Prescott, you know, Dakota Rain Prescott, the man got his money. Um, I thought the Cowboys were going to, you know, try to franchise him. They did not. 
uh, literally like on the last day, they decide to give him his deal. So mad props, mad respect. But not just Dak, man. I have a list here, some of the top free agents that were signed, either franchised or signed long-term deals. So we had Aaron Jones for Green Bay. People thought he might have got franchise tech or left Green Bay. He got a pretty nice deal, right? He went to uh, stay with Green Bay. Kenny Galladay got a nice, I think it was four years, 72 mil to go to the Giants, right? Um, Allen Robinson stayed with the Bears on a franchise tag. Chris Godwin stayed with the Bucks on a franchise tag. Um, you know, Chris Carson stayed with Seattle. Kenyon Drake, you know, the running back from Arizona went to Oakland. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster stayed with Pittsburgh. When he had offers to go to the Philadelphia Eagles and the Baltimore Ravens for more money, supposedly. But he said he's going to stay with the Steelers. Uh, the Washington football team picked up Ryan Fitzpatrick. They picked up the receiver from uh, the Panthers, Curtis Samuel, uh, former Ohio State Buckeye, to go with his old teammate, Terry Mc, uh, McLaurin over there. Um, Jameis stayed with the Saints, uh, surprisingly so, but he did. Um, and we know the Patriots, they loaded up. They got Hunter Henry, the tight end, John New Smith, um, Nelson, uh, Alligator Arms, <laughs> Aguilar. Uh, they, they made some moves. They got some defensive players coming back too. Um, you know, the Patriots, Bill Beltrick, he got in his bag this time because normally he never spends as much off free agency, bro. Um, so those are just some of the top players. Oh, and Will Fuller used to play for the Texans, mm -hmm. actually signed with the Miami Dolphins, Miami, uh, which we'll get into in a second, but they made a significant trade uh, for this upcoming NFL draft. Uh, but for right now, we'll stay on free agents, bro. So, and I know we're going to go into our, of course, our, our beloved NFC East. But yeah. so some of the names I just dropped too, bro, who are some of the, the big impact signings that you think will have a, a strong impact for this upcoming season that I just mentioned? Uh, so for me, I, I personally believe, uh, I'm gonna start with Kenny Galladay. Uh, I know he was injured, you know, for most of last season, but I think, you know, the New York Giants obviously needed, you know, another, they need, they, they have like certain weapons. They don't have like that, that, that true number one. And I think Kenny Galladay can provide that for them. Uh, obviously you just mentioned him, you know, he, he signed for, like you said, $72 million, 17 mil signing bonus and 40 mil guaranteed. Uh, I know like, so in my opinion, bro, I know you're not going to want to hear this, <laughs> but you, 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 but you, you know, you, you named a lot of great players on that list, but you left certain ones off and you left a particular team off that you didn't want to discuss. And I, and I, and I kind of know why, because they just won a Super Bowl, you know, literally, you know, last month. And uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So does everybody know they signed everybody back? Everybody and all the haters out there thought they were going to lose players. For example, people thought they were going to lose Shaq Barrett. What they signed Shaq Barrett for? 72 mil, 36 million guarantee. The brother's going to get 17 mil per year. They got Levante David back, 25 mil, 20 million guarantee. And you just mentioned Chris Godwin. Sorry, you did mention Chris Godwin. 15 mil, like you said, franchise tag. They got Gronk back for $8 million with incentives for $10 mil. They signed Sue back to a one-year $10 million deal. And what did my boy do? Tom Brady. What did he do? Restructure his deal, didn't he? Didn't he, bro? Yep. The same yep. part of the cap space. That's what, I'm, just, I'm just saying, bro. I mean, his, his new contract with the Bucks is another two years, 50 mil, but 41 million is due this upcoming season. It just 8.9 is due in 2022. So like, and they brought back just literally the other day Leonard Fournette on a little cheap. Yes, deal. they did. They brought him yeah, back. Yes, the only yesterday. one who's not back is AB. That's it. He, 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 he will be. But they, they'll get him back. They'll get him back. Don't worry. They'll sign it for a cheap deal and they'll be good to go. Bring the whole band back together. Okay? Yeah. Repeat. Repeat. Okay? We've never seen something like this from a Super Bowl champion being able to resign this man, basically everybody. Bro, this, man, this, they're going to, listen, I told you, I've been telling you this too. They're going to tear the league up. What we saw last year, they're going to dominate this year. I just want everybody to be aware in the regular season, you should expect nothing less, nothing less than 13 and three. At the very oh, worst, I'm 13 and three. Absolutely. Bro, they're going to tear the league up, man. They're tearing them up. Brady's coming out the gate. They're firing, bro. <laughs> they're not gonna let up at all. I'm telling you, as long if they're healthy, bro, I don't know any NFC who could stop them, bro. I, I really don't. 
I really don't. No, I, I agree. I agree. Um, so real I know quick, you... bro, to, I wanted to move to uh, just the NFC East side of this free agency update, right? Because, you know, Eagles, my boy, the Cowboy fan, they got, you know, the big fish, Dak Prescott stayed. Um, my Eagles, obviously, they all they were doing were reconstructuring contracts to be able just to get in the green, like at even um, for the uh, for the salary cap, restructuring deals and this and that, um, which is great. They cut a lot, you know, dead weight. You know, Deshaun Jackson, my guy, D-Jack, he just signed with the L.A. Rams. So that's his little homecoming, I guess, for him to finish out his career. Um, Alshon Jeffrey, he's gone, done. Um, so we, you're cutting up veterans that were there. Before. We don't care. Zach Hurts might get traded. Um, <laughs> we we obviously care. know. Yeah, we obviously know Wentz is gone. So I mean, Eagles really didn't sign. They signed. They had very small signings. No one big. I think, bro, in the NFC East, even your Cowboys. I, I don't really know who y'all signed. Y'all signed a few people, but nobody. Oh, I'll, I'll name them for you. I'll name them for ahead. you. Yeah, go ahead. I know you know. I know you know. I'll, I'll name them for you. Don't 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 get me started. Um. Matter of fact, about some who we signed. Who? What do you mean? Who? Who we resigned is the question. Dak Prescott. Okay, we resigned. Like old... I said, but hey, Jerry it, did say. Jerry said y'all have room to get some other people. I ain't see it though. No. Oh, okay. So, just real quick, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get to these players, but I'm gonna just give you guys the background of Dak's uh, contract, 164 mil guarantee. I mean, mm-hmm. sorry, 164 million, including 126 million guarantee, excuse me, uh, in, two de- in two key details, a no trade clause and a no tag provision. Uh, Prescott's deal averages to 42 mil, o- to tw- 42 mil, excuse me, a year over the first three seasons. It was 75 mil in the first season and 66 million signing bonus. So my brother got paid flat out. Uh, but just like every said, you know, we haven't really made, you know, much huge signings. Uh, we re-signed Jordan Lewis and Cedric Wilson. I like Cedric Wilson, by the way. He's a very good uh, receiver. I think he has a lot of promise. Um, he's going to be like their fourth receiver this year, but he's going to be playing a lot in the slot. So I'm looking forward to seeing his progression. Um, he knew Neil. So we signed him for a one-year deal from the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, he missed actually 13 games in the 2019 season due to Achilles injury. And actually last season, he had 20, 24 assisted tackles, one sack and one interception and 100 combined tackles. Upside is uh, Kinu is 25 years old. So let's just see, you know, if he's still going to be able to progress from that Achilles injury. So we'll find out. Um, it's talked to him playing either safety or linebacker this year. So we'll see. Uh, Devontae Casey, uh, you know, he signed a one-year deal as well. He's coming off a Kelly's injury this past season. Um, but before his injury, he led the league in interceptions with seven in 2018. And in 2019, he had three interceptions. So it shows you that, you know, he has a lot of promise. It just depends on the Achilles injury. And, you know, they say, you know, he can make the switch from corner to safe. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, outside of that, we haven't made any other big-time you know, moves at all. Uh, we signed players who we believe will be able to help out as far as like the defensive line, like Brent Urban, Rondale Carter, and Carlos Watkins. We signed them for defensive line help. Uh, and we also got Jerron Curse as well, um, who played for the Detroit Lions as well. He's a strong safety. So we'll see, hopefully in the draft, that we can do something. You know, I'm hoping that we pick Patrick Sartain with the 10th overall pick. Uh, but like you said, bro, we haven't really done much. I'm hoping maybe they sign maybe a KJ Wright, maybe who's still out there on the market, see if they can get him or possibly sign Richard Sherman to help out with these young cornerbacks and, you know, the young secondary as a whole. So we'll see. Bro. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the name of the D coordinator you guys got? Who was uh, uh, the, the Falcons coach? I forget his name, though. Dan, Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn. Right. So the Keanu Neal and uh, the Casey, yeah. those are form- those are some of his former players. Yeah. Um, I like the, the Neil pickup is good. See, is you normally the year after you come back from the Achilles tear, not not the the year you've rehabbed and you get it. The year after that is normally the year when you kind of get back to normal. So I think yeah. uh Neil, he he, you know, he he he's good, man. He's a thumper. So he's like you said, linebacker is safety. Um, he he can lay some wood on the field, man. So I think oh, yeah. that actually will be a solid pickup for y'all. But y'all need anybody on defense. Y'all, you named all these linemen I had never heard of, but y'all just need bodies at this point. <laughs> <laughs> y'all need like, y'all defense You're right, terrible. Uh, but listen, I mean, I can't say much from the Eagles' perspective. I mean, Lord, bro, I'm just, talk I'm about your breaking news yesterday. 
Yeah, well, we could, we could go there. We could transition to the draft, the upcoming draft. So uh, big news you guys are aware of. So it started with the Miami Dolphins, who hold the currently the three pick. By the way, that third pick was from the Houston Texans because they were so god-awful. They had traded it before. Um, I think it was in a deal for the uh, the lineman. I forget his name, the left tackle. Uh, but anyway, Dolphins had the third pick. And they have a pick later in the first round, too. So the Dolphins, they have two, as you guys know. This should be his, his second year, full year starting, hopefully. They traded with San Francisco for the 12th pick. And San Fran actually gave them two other first-round picks for future years for that pick. Dolphins made a splash. That's no pun intended. I know they're the Miami Dolphins, but okay. Um, so after that, of all teams, the Philadelphia Eagles at six, you know, Jamar Chase fall into their, their hands, bro. Um, Devontae Smith, they could, you know, Kyle Pitts, they could have picked whoever they wanted as a playmaker to fall right into their lap, right? But, you know, the Eagles do Eagle things, right? So they traded with the Miami Dolphins. They swapped the 12th, uh, sorry, yeah, the 12th pick for the sixth pick, and the Eagles got a first round pick for the following draft. Now, people, I've had a day to process this because I was very, very annoyed yesterday with this pick, okay, with the trade. Now, people are saying, oh, well, don't forget next year, the Carson Wentz trade might turn him into a first round pick. So if you think about it on the bright side, Next year, we could have three first-round picks. That's great. But um, I don't know if there's going to be a Jamar Chase next year. I don't know if there's going to be a Kyle Pitts next year. I don't know if there's going to be a Devontae Freeman who won the Heisman Trophy. Are those guys going to be in next year's draft? Different names, right? So when you think of that, it bothers me because I'm like, you could have had a – listen, the Eagles have to get younger, and it's not going to happen in one year. I understand it's going to take a couple years, really. But if you want to see the best of Jalen Hurts, right, before you make a decision if you're going to either draft someone next year or keep him, you have to surround him with talent, bro. The receivers on our roster we have right now, Greg Ward Jr., he's a solid brother, but he's just – he's a slack guy at best. J.J. Ortega Whiteside, second-round pick from a couple years ago, another terrible draft pick. He's as good as a blocking tight end. He's not even really a receiver. You got uh, Travis Fulgham, who had a nice little run in between last year, but he vanished. Quez Watkins was like a fourth or sixth round pick last year. We don't got receivers, man. Oh, my, oh my bad. Jalen, um, made of glass, Rager is on the team as well. Um, who had That's a who was bro. out for like seven or eight, seven or eight weeks was injured last year. I forget the injury, bro. Where he got popped. He's he's a, he's a little dude, man. He's like he, he about five nine, five ten. He's like Deshaun Jackson, but not as fast. I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah, so when you look at it, and remember, Rager was taken in front of Justin Jefferson. Yeah. Justin Jefferson. We didn't trade up for CeeDee Lamb, which I would have been okay with if we took Justin Jefferson. But we didn't do that because, you know, Howie Roseman likes to be, you know, the smart guy in the room, right? Let me go with Jalen Rager because he's got speed. And I barely – I saw a flash in the pan is what I saw. If he's healthy this year and you're telling me that's the best receiver we got, we have no veteran presence at all at receiver, you need to get an instant playmaker in this draft. You pick at 12, Cowboys pick at 10, Giants pick at 11, Eagles pick at 12. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. And you, you're probably loving this. And I'm looking at these, I'm like, now people are saying, oh, you guys might be able to get Devontae Smith. Yeah, might. And we probably still wouldn't even pick him if he was available. Jalen Waddle, who people are actually saying could be better than Smith. He's not going to be there. Jamar Chase is out of here. Now, here's the thing, bro. Think about why the Dolphins wanted to trade back to that sixth pick. You know why, bro? Because they're drafting Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, or Devontae Smith. The go that was two was guy, right? That's the only reason you trade back to six. And the Eagles said, we don't need an, a, a stud receiver who could be, you know, a perennial pro bowler, potentially, right? We don't know these things. It's just all, you know, the mock draft. We really don't know. You'd rather pick after the Cowboys, after the Giants. So even if we want to get a defensive stud, we know the Cowboys are getting somebody on defense. That's a fact. The Giants are either going to get another playmaker or they're going to get somebody on defense too. 
So it, it baffles me that we think, oh, well, let's get a first rounder for next year. No, no, no. If the Wentz pick could be a first rounder next year, just keep two first rounders. You needed an instant playmaker this year. Bro, the Eagles have 11 picks in the draft. They would have had 10 if they didn't make the trade with the Dolphins. You really, really need to get rid of that six pick. I'm done with them, bro. I'm done. I have absolutely no idea who they'll pick at 12. It's really, you're going to get the sloppy seconds of whoever the Giants and Cowboys don't want. That's what it's going to come down to. We were so god awful. We were the six pick. Why trade? You don't always get a chance to drop to draft near top five. You got to be really sorry. We don't know next year's talent. You got studs, bona fide studs, Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, or Kyle Pitts. And you can't, you need that weapon for Jalen Hurts to become better. I don't care if we kept Wentz. He's not doing nothing with these weapons. Ertz is on his way out. We don't got anybody, bro. It's like, what are we doing? Hey. I'm done with it, bro. I'm done. Hey, like, like my boy Rick Flair does. Woo! That's what I was doing yesterday when I saw that news. Because I don't know what the hell y'all are doing. But but you know what though? Let me say this though, bro. The, the, this this relax, calm down. Everything's gonna be okay. What's alarming is is that you guys were actually trying to move up to get Zach Wilson. That was the goal. You got that, and that's what I'm saying. Like I get what you're saying to help out Jalen Hurts, but y'all not even sold on Jalen Hurts. And I, I remember we had this conversation. I know you love the brother, and, and look, I, I, I hope he's successful. You got to give him a chance at least. You got to see. I, it. I'm with you. I'm with you. But 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 I can't, but my thing is this, bro. They and they are not sold on him. Say what you want about this move here. I know Joe Flacco's done, but it but it's no surprise that they brought in a veteran quarterback just cause. I just want you to know that. I, I, all I, I, I expect. I expect. Oh, yeah, okay. I did. Okay. Cool. Because cool, you cool. want someone to mentor him, even though their skill sets are not even close to the same, bro. M- mentor or possibly take his job because I don't know. I, I, uh, I don't know what you guys. I really don't Flacco know. Flacco's if he got hurt, but he no, I'm, I'm with it, you. Bro. No, the only no, time no. Joe Flacco's been good is in the playoffs. That's it. No, no, I, I agree. Well, but no, I'm talking about what you guys are thinking, not for me as a as a you know spectator. I'm with you. But what I'm saying is your organization so twisted in the head. One minute you guys say Jalen Hurts is the guy. Next minute you want to trade for Zach Wilson. I mean, what is it? What, what are you guys doing? I just want to know. But I, I don't have the answers. And I'm, I'm upset because when I found that out, I'm like, well, we're talking about stockpiling picks. But yeah. at the same time, you would have had to give up a next year's first rounder to get the three. That's yeah. probably what would have sure. happened. So sure. it's like you would have even had lesser picks. But then instead of getting a bona fide stud potential perennial pro bowl receiver or even if you wanted to get a defensive stud i would have been okay with that too you missed out now dallas is going to get the top corner in the draft the giants are going to get whatever leftover receiver tight end defensive player that's it i don't get it chill relax relax bro but look chill i'm not looking forward to the draft look look, look, but look but, but look at this though and, and, and I agree with you. I don't know because if you guys get three first round picks next year, I, I, I feel you on that. As far as like, we don't know if they're going to be hits or not. We we don't know if these guys are going to turn into something. That's the thing too. You don't know. You you really don't know what the NFL draft. And then the third thing that I heard about yesterday is that you guys have sixty million cap po- cap space possibly for next season. So I think you guys are banking on that too. You guys probably going to splash money all throughout the place come next off season probably. You I would be ever ever since that whole dream right, back team year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's super team, whatever they call it. <laughs> yeah, dream team. Yeah, nah, we we haven't spent, we haven't made big splashes like that. Not not. So, it's been like just decent, but not big. But, but I, um, I don't know what Howie Rose and what you guys are gonna do. I really don't know. You guys are like, look, we have two teams in NFC East, Dallas and Philly, who do not know what they're doing in the front office. They just don't. They make dumb decisions. Mm. And I really don't know what's going on. I mean, the fact that there was a rumor that Dallas would take Kyle Pitts if he fell that far. I like, I love Kyle Pitts. But like, that yeah, was no, the he definitely defense. Not, he's not going to 10. Ain't no, no, I know. I, no, I know. I, I mean, before all this. Yeah, yeah, before. But I'm, I'm just saying, like, Dallas needs defense. The, the priority should be defense the whole draft. You have offensive side of the ball. That's fine. But Philly, man, I don't. 
Man, I I, I really don't Let know me, what you guys I'm about to just finish right here because as we're talking about all these draft picks, I want you to be aware of something. Ever what? since – Jesus Christ, this is terrible. The Carson Wentz draft was 2016, right? Outside of Carson Wentz, I'm going down the list, bro. Carson Wentz, he made the Pro Bowl because, that you know, the MVP year he got hurt. He was a – he was voted a pro bowler. He obviously couldn't play it. We get it, right? Wentz, I'm going the year after 2017. We got Derek Barnett, first round pick. Sidney Jones, who's not even on the team. Rasul Douglas, not even on the team. First yeah, round picks. Okay. Well. 2018, Dallas Goddard, second round pick. Yeah, he's still there. He's decent. Avante Maddox, eh, fourth round pick. Last year, 20, well, 2019, Andre Dillard, first pick. Supposed to be that, that guy, left tackle. Injured. And when he did play... Nothing special. The only one I like out of the last, like, five years is Miles Sanders, who was picked second round 2019. Oh, we had two second round picks 2019. J.J. Ortega Whiteside. Do you know who that yeah. is, bro? Do you yeah. know him? Yeah, yeah, no, I haven't heard of the guy. <laughs> last year, Jalen yeah. Rager. After, like, bro, what? I don't have faith in the drafting. That's why if you pick six at least – it's so, harder for you to mess it up because you know the But what happens if y'all did, though? That's the thing. Like, we're talking about your draft history. What happens if, it's most likely you guys would have messed up the sixth pick as well. Like, that, that's You're what's so right. funny about it. You're probably <laughs> right. so funny. You're probably like, right. <laughs> y'all but you're, you're like, it's like you're scared to Parsons have something. Or something. I mean, that's honestly what the pick will be now, 12. That's probably what it's going to be because he'll be there. I would be okay at 12, but when you're at six – and my boy told me the other day he was an Eagles fan. He's like, you know, it's only six picks away. It's not that big of a difference. I'm like, it is. Yes, it is. It is. It I know. Is. I think he was being sarcastic when he was saying it, but it is a big deal to me. Yeah. You're not going to have those. I, listen, bro, you missed last year. You saw what CD Lamb did. You saw what Justin Jefferson did. The top three receivers, you're going to get, well, honestly, at six, you get a top two. They're not all three of them going to be picked. A top two. Because, bro, honestly, I think at least three or four quarterbacks getting taken in the top six picks. I think at least three. At least three. I'm just confused. What is so intriguing about the Zach Wilson angle? Because I I just – like, I'm just confused. I'm not sold on it personally. I'm not either. But I'm just confused from your guys' standpoint because it's like you have Jalen Hurts, a guy that you drafted in the second round last year. You should be developing him instead of talking about getting another quarterback to replace him. You know know what's hilarious about this whole thing, bro? Wentz signs his big deal. Right after that, you draft Hurts, right? Well, you signed Wentz to the deal, but it didn't, it didn't kick in until the year did, after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You draft Hurts, and, and Howie Roseman states, oh, we're a QB factory. A <laughs> quarterback factory, right? Uh, yeah. So he has to live with that because you drafting Hurts essentially was Wentz's way out the door. Even though he was awful, that was his way out the door. Now – you pick Hurts, Howie. This was you. So now you want to get another quarterback after Lurry, uh, Jeffrey Lurry, the owner, had came out publicly and stated, oh, we're actually – I want to keep um, – I actually, no, it's not keep. I want to make Hurts the starter. Surround him. Build around him. Cool. Normally owners want to say that publicly like that around the draft, but whatever. And you were going to still draft him. You would have lost picks. And it just it just doesn't make sense because how you drafted Jalen Hurts, you have not got a big enough sample size to see him. Unless people were so high up on Zach Wilson, they think you can't miss on him. People I are. personally, bro, they are. And they bro, they always get like this close to the draft. Damn. You know, Trevor Lawrence, we already know he's going one. But I mean, yeah. damn, maybe the Jaguars are like, maybe we should look at Zach Wilson too. I don't know, which I think yeah, would be a huge mistake if they yeah. did. But hey, what do we know? Yeah. I don't know, bro. That's uh, man. Well, the draft, bro, is about a month out. I know we'll probably have a special show leading up to the draft, but I am not looking forward to it at all. I'm really not. Ah, ah. My expectations are low. After last year, oh man, I'm done. Ever, I mean, ever since the Wentz draft, ever since, bro, we ain't got no playmaker for real. And, and, and real quick, I know you brought up what um, Jeffrey Lurie said. But, you know, what's crazy is you guys said the same thing about Carson Wentz when he was there. Like, when he was struggling, he's still our guy. We're going to stick in with him. Then he traded him. I don't know what you guys are doing. I, re- I really can't don't trust know, anything I really, they say. I anything. don't know the direction. That, that's one thing I can say. Like, 
even though like Dallas has been so bad, I got to at least give Dallas this. I at least see the sense of direction. I don't know where y'all going. <laughs> like, I don't really, All I really we're going don't know. Is into a straight rebuild of misery. That's where we're going. Well, then y'all need to come out and just rebuild, like rebuild, and it, just rebuild. Yeah, bro. They don't get it. That's what I'm saying. Hey, man, don't be surprised, man. Man, Joe Flacco starts. <laughs> <laughs> they get it. They get this 2013 out here in the Super Bowl. Oh <laughs> uh, no, no, there's no no Joe Cool. No, no, no. I hope not for your sake. I'm just saying, like if Jalen plays bad, you know what's gonna happen. I just want to stay healthy. Uh, center. Me too. That's all I want to see. I'm, I'm pulling for the brother. Pulling for him. I am too. But uh, yeah, so we got an exciting year of misery for the NFC East, y'all. Bunch of eight and eight, nine and seven, seven and nine, six and ten teams. But you know, once upon a time, you know, when I was a little younger. The NFC East was actually a very strong division. Uh, it's obviously took a turn for the worst the past few years. I don't know when it's going to get better. Watch the football team seems to be improved. The Giants even seem to be improved. But that's all based upon uh, Daniel Jones and if he's actually going to take it the next step. Got a Dory uh, Jackson. I think so. that was a, a big sign yeah, for him. Was, a, he'd be a good number two corner, good number yeah. two corner. But because uh, remember, he got cut by the Titans before they yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah, Titans are yeah. about to pay him, and then they uh, now nah, we're gonna cut you. We cut you. Titans dropped they like three fourths of their starting secondary. But bro, I think the Cowboys they have a, a, a the lane open is for them to take the division if they want it. It's there. It's there, bro. You know, you know. <laughs> the thing about Dallas is Dallas is just. <laughs> Look, man, like Dallas is just laughable. They're, they're, they're a laughable organization. Hey, bro. And, I, I, <laughs> and I, I, I'm not, I'm not, pre- I'm not going to predict what their record is going to be this year. Cause I, I really don't, don't want know. This time. Yeah. You don't want Jinx I, this time. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was eight and eight. I really wouldn't just because of the horrible organization that they have. I mean, you have, you know, Why Jerry you Jones, this, man. Why Who's the owner and the GM? I'm surprised they're eight and eight. I wish should have high expectations. No, why should I? They they, they suck. Why should say, I have high expectations? Are you kidding me? I'm talking about compared to the rest of the the rest of the. Uh, I, the I don't. I don't because Washington's going to come up. They have a very good head coach. Very good head coach. Come on now. Who's and your then, quarterback? They don't have one. But <laughs> Heineke, Heineke, <laughs> and, 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 and Fitzpatrick. I'm just saying. But I'm still on Ron Rivera. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I mean, heck, they won seven games last year with, you know, Haskins playing for a little bit. The Alex I'm Smith comes off of energy. I mean, they 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 won seven games. I mean, and it actually was a competitive game with Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the postseason until it got out of hand in the fourth. But I'm just saying, the quarterback. Like, that's right. The defense can play as well as they right, can, but without but, that quarterback, it don't matter. But, but we're talking about the Dallas Cowboys, bro. A team that messes up everything along the way. It don't matter, okay? <laughs> it don't. It don't. Look, I'm just trying to tell you. I, I'm, I'm trying saying, to tell you if Dak is healthy. This is the quarterbacks you have. That, that's eat. gonna ball Dak, out. He's gonna ball Taylor out. Hurts, Daniel Jones. Tyler Heineke or Fitz, Fitzpatrick you're for not, half the season. You're not wrong. I get what you're saying, but this is Dallas we're talking about. They find ways to mess up things when it should be an easy path to the postseason. This is what they do. So, so, uh, so maybe, it, maybe the season will be more fun than I anticipate. We'll accident see. waiting to happen, like Stephen A. Smith said. So I, I'm not putting up. It, it, look, Jerry Jones changed his mindset and get a better coach in there and get a better culture. I'm not. I'm not sold on Dallas doing it. Anything at all, and I love you know I, you know I love Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott going ball out, but I I just think that defense ain't going to be good once again. I'm with you, bro. We we shall see. You know we love the NFC East, y'all. I'm sorry if you guys you know AFC West, AFC North, NFC West. We love the East, so we gonna get into it because you know that's that's what moves the needle, right? That's but nah, but uh but anyway, man, we are going to see, man. Free agency, we saw some big signings, the drafts coming up in about a month, and we are definitely going to be talking about that heavy in the next coming weeks. Uh but until then, we're going to transition to the last segment of the show. Yep. All right, welcome back y'all, and this last segment of the show is going to be a uh, fan favorite, the food for thought. Um uh, we talk some NBA, talk some NFL. We're going to stay in the NFL um, but this is about the news that's been dragging on. You guys have all probably been aware of, um, heard updates almost daily about this. And 
uh, it's the Deshaun Watson um, allegations at the moment, right? So we all know Deshaun Watson is one of the top quarterbacks in the league, up and coming superstar. He wanted out of the Houston Texans organization. He wanted to get traded, want nothing to do with them. Just really a year after he signed that mega contract, right? So since then, really since he's requested his trade, um, there's been some really um, uh, crazy and serious allegations against him. We got to take him seriously, even though I believe innocent until proven guilty. However, Deshaun Watson uh, was accused of sexual harassment from a number of massage therapists. At the moment, there's 16 uh, that's been posted on the Harris County District Clerk's website. However, um, by Monday, and this is Saturday once again, you by Monday, it might be in the 20s, okay? So pretty much uh, it, it's tough, man. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to really say everything that they said, but basically – um, the behavior, uh, it was stated that a behavior um, of Watson is part of a disturbing pattern of preying on vulnerable women, women, excuse me, as one of the lawsuits says, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is talking about he assaulted and harassed the plaintiffs in the case, right? By exposing himself um, and like touching them with his genitals, okay? So basically... Uh, Watson does get these massages. These this is not like false. This has happened, but we obviously we don't know what happens behind closed doors. Um, but pretty much, you know, these are very serious allegations. It's a civil suit, too. I must say it's a civil suit. Um, obviously, uh Deshaun Watson and his lawyer have you know shot down these cases and thinking that's complete, you know, ludicrous, it's not gonna stick. So Deshaun even said he wanted to maybe go to trial with this, right? Because people talk about, you know, will he settle in court? We have to see. Um, but all I can say, man, for one, it's just a bad look. Like, whether he's innocent or guilty, it's a terrible look. Um, and, you know, not putting race into everything, but he's a black man, black quarterback. It, I don't like it. I, I don't like it, whether it's – obviously, if it's, if it's true, then that's even even worse, right? Like, I, I look up to him as one of my favorite players in the NFL right now. So – I mean, shh, we go down the timeline, y'all. Really started March 30th of 2020. March, April, May, June, you know, July, August. There were multiple encounters, September, October. I'm just going down the line of the cases. December, January, and even March 5th of this year, okay? So, whew, it's a lot. I hope for his sake and my sake as a fan that the brother comes out of it um, innocent. I, that's just what I want. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. Um, obviously, he has to face the ramifications and the um, consequences if he is guilty. If he is not, I will say that I think it was a plan for somebody out to get him because he wanted to get traded. That's how I feel about it, honestly, truthfully. If that is what is the case, if it's innocent, I think the timing of it, bro, is really what bothers me the most. The timing of it after he wanted to be traded. I think there was some report that uh, the lawyer for the plaintiff, you know, the people against Watson is, is kind of close with some of the people in the Houston, Texas organization. It's not a good look. And the Houston, Texas have not made any comments publicly, any statements publicly defending this man, right? Sometimes in instances like this, sometimes the team will support them. Um, obviously, you don't want it to be true and you hope it's not. But we just got to see, bro. Um, it's frustrating. I hope that everything is false, but I'm not true. We, we just got to see, man. Just let it, let the legal case play out. But I want to get your take on it, bro. Cause I see you kind of fade to black on this issue. I see you kind of fell back in the, in the logo and the black, I, you kind of went away for a minute, but uh, uh, I no, want to no, see no. you come back on the scene and give me, give me your take on this, bro. On this, on this very serious matter with Deshaun Watson. Yeah, yeah. So I'm actually going to start off with the response uh, real quickly that uh, Deshaun, Deshaun Watson, excuse me, made on March 16th. Uh, he basically said, as a result, um, he said, as a result of his social media post, um, he basically said, I recently became aware of a lawsuit that has apparently been filed against me. I have not yet seen the complaint, but I know this. I've never treated any woman with anything other than the utmost respect. Uh, the, plan, the plaintiff's lawyer claims that this isn't about money, but before filing suit, he made a baseless six-figure settlement demand, which I quickly rejected. Unlike him, this isn't about money for me. It's about clearing my name, and I look forward to doing that. 
Also, uh, Deshaun Watson's attorney, Rusty Harden, um, also made a statement as well. And he basically said the tactic of refusing our request to confidentially provide the names of the pla plaintiffs so we can fully, guess, fully investigate their claims makes uncovering the truth extremely difficult, Harden said. Anonymity is often necessary as a shield for victims, but opposing counsel has used it as a sword to publicly humiliate Deshaun before the truth-seeking process can even begin. Uh, and I know you kind of just mentioned, bro, about, you know, the Texans haven't really made a response as far as, like, defending Deshaun. Uh, only response that I've seen that they've made is they said we became aware of a civil lawsuit inv involving Deshaun Watson through a social media post. The team said, this is the first time we've heard of the matter, and we hope to learn more soon. We take accusation of this nature that involve anyone within the Houston Texans organization seriously. We will await further information before making any additional statements on this incident. So that's all they pretty much said. And, you know, like you said, bro, you know, pretty much, you know, it's just strange with the timing of this, because like you mentioned before, Deshaun asked for a trade, you know, early this off season. So, you know, the Houston Texans are very upset that he wants to leave. And it's just very strange, like you said, these accusations come out now while he's asking for a trade request. And and like you mentioned, you know, this is a black man, you know, that a lot of people look up to, you know, especially within the community. You know, Deshaun Watson does a lot, you know. Before this incident, you know, everybody's heard great things about the man. You know, he has very good character. He's a very good football player. You haven't heard anything bad about him. So it's just strange that this has came out. I just hope that it isn't true. And, you know, as you know, the Savory Show, you know, we take these matters very seriously. So, you know, if these are true, you know, our hearts go out, you know, obviously to the victims because, you know, we don't, you know, wish this on anybody. You know, we don't want sexual, you know, assault against anybody. So, you know, we hope these aren't true um, for both, you know, for Deshaun Watson's sake. And hopefully he can move on from this. Um, but if this is true, bro, like it's going to be, you know, a very hurtful effect for a lot of people who really support this man. And, you know, I, I just hope like this situation doesn't turn into how it did. I know we talked about this offline as far as like what happened with Kobe Bryant, where, you know, it was a civil suit. You know, he paid the girl off like everybody likes to say. And from you know, even before he died, everybody was just like, you know what, you know, he's a rapist, things like that. They basically just condemned him without even really knowing the whole facts or the truth of the story. So, you know, I just hope that's not Deshaun's fate. Um, and I just hope everything gets resolved, you know, as soon as possible. So that's my take on it. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, bro. And it just brought to light um, the, some of the facts of the case. Obviously, that's all we can go off of. A lot of it's been speculation, yeah. um, but obviously we, we, you know, take it seriously. It's not a laughing matter. And like I said, we our opinion is that we want him to be innocent. But obviously, if he's yeah. guilty, he's guilty, man. He's got to face the consequences um, of his actions. So we can't support that. Um, yeah. I'm just I'm saying if he's innocent, that's how I told you all how I feel about it. I just yep. feel like it's just like a smear campaign on him because at the end of the day, um, even if him being innocent, if he truly is innocent, then the the chances of him being traded for one are done at this moment in time. He's not getting traded, right? And that's what Houston wanted. They did not want to trade him. They did not like how he was public about wanting to be traded. And, you know, this could even hurt the trade value, right, bro? Moving forward, let's just say month, two months, however long the legal process pans out, if he settles, if he um, is deemed innocent, you know, it's, it's prolonging him getting traded. And some teams that might have wanted to, you know, trade their three first-round picks and all this other stuff, they're going to have some reservations on that. They're going to want to take a step back and be like, well, do we really want this man to be our franchise quarterback? That's those questions that's going to be in the back of the minds of these owners and GMs around the league. And because of that, you know, he might be stuck in Houston, which is really what they want. Either way, they, you know, it's unfortunate, man. But like I said, we just pray and hope that it's, uh, that it's false. And again, if it is real, we take it seriously. And, you know, you got to respect the women coming out and, and making sure that their voices were heard and um, addressing the matter. That's all I could really say on it at this point. I uh, can't really speculate too much besides that. Just uh, wait to see legal, uh, how the legal process pans out. And 
obviously after the result of everything, we'll probably come back on here and, and, and address whether it's positive or negative. We'll address it there. But um, definitely want to make sure we had the opportunity to get that out there, y'all. Um, yeah. Um, bro, did you quick, have anything bro. else you wanted to add yeah, on I, it? Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask you because you brought up the Trey scenario. So let, let's say this ha- – say, let's just say this progresses throughout the whole season. And, like, nothing's discussed. Like, nothing at all. Like, it just goes completely silent. Do you think teams will still be hesitant to trade for him then without even knowing the whole facts? Because the only reason I bring that up is because with Antonio Brown, for example, like his case is still out there, but he played, you know, this past season, you know, I mean, he was suspended for eight games, but it's like nothing happened. Like it just went silent. Like we don't hear nothing about it no more. And so like, like you said, he was suspended too. And he faced yeah, yeah. at the time the punishment uh, from the NFL for what they yeah. could. Yeah. He was suspended uh, eight games. Yeah. 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 So, so what, like, if that happens, do you think teams will still be like, have reservations? Like, uh, we don't know if we want Deshaun or do you think, Teams will still be like, you know what? Since we haven't heard anything, we're going to still see what the process is. We're going to still take the chance. Now, what might happen is the price is probably going to be like lower now. Like the high draft picks might, I mean, not, I mean, not high draft picks, but the multiple draft picks might not be there now. Yeah. But that, that but that's that, going against the Texans right before they want. Yeah. So yeah. the Texans are not going for one, Deshaun has a no trade clause, and two, the Texans get because honestly, bro, the Texans want to keep him. So if Deshaun is really willing to but sacrifice his paychecks, he got power. He can though. do it because it's gonna oh yeah, power. it's gonna look real bad if they got they a no trade off. Will. Yeah, he got so no we're gonna see off. y'all the next coming you know weeks months you know how the story pans out and what's gonna happen for Deshaun man. Like I said, we pray he's innocent if he's guilty, face the consequence, and we got to move on from there. But that um, yeah, you're right about that exactly. So with that being said, y'all, that concludes another episode of The Savory Show. Uh, We appreciate you guys uh, tuning in, whether you're on YouTube or one of our um, podcast platforms, um, Apple Music, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Stitcher, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, We truly appreciate it. Um, Again, it's another Savory Show Saturday episode. Whenever you guys are tuning in of the day of the week, hope you're having a great day, a great morning, great evening, whatever y'all doing. Make sure y'all check us out instagram account at the savory show remember savory show is spelled as you see in the logo behind us s-a-v-e-r-y y'all take it easy we'll see y'all in about a week